Hello, and welcome to the Payments.com digital discussion on the use of cash. I'm Karen Webster. So pundits have been predicting the death of cash for decades. Writers even advocate for its death, suggesting, among other things, that paper currency is a germ-laden artifact unnecessary in a digital age. Yet tell that to a Kenyan with her M-Pesa account who goes to an agent in her village to pick up cash so that she has it to buy food for her family. And the 99.7% of Americans who in, most, in the most developed economy in the world with more than three credit cards each in their wallets who still use it 8.5 times a month to pay for things. Now that's not to say that cash isn't being displaced by cards and digital payments methods. Its share of transaction volume may be declining. However, and perhaps surprisingly, its growth almost everywhere in the world is on the upswing as more people spend more money. As Mark Twain would say, the accounts of its death are greatly exaggerated. So we're here today to talk about its use and growth in a part of the world that's going to be very interesting to watch for many reasons, Western Europe. Given the economic challenges across Europe and the now impending fallout from Brexit, cash, an already important artifact in those countries, may take on an even greater importance. I'm delighted today to be joined by Jonathan Simpson Dent, the Chief Commercial Officer of Cartronics, who is going to dig into this topic with me. Cartronics is the largest non-bank ATM operator in the world whose business is very much about cash and giving people secure and convenient access to it. So, so Jonathan, thanks for joining me today. It's a pleasure. So um, Cartronics uh, is, has been a, a great collaborator with us on putting this cash index together. And so I thought what we would do is step through some of the findings so that we can perhaps explain a little bit in more detail the, the use of cash, its growth, and some of the idiosyncrasies in the countries that we, that we examine. So first, slide, a lot of data on here, but I guess the one thing that jumps out at me is the 2.1 trillion euros in cash used in 2015 in the 15 countries that account for 89% of the GDP of the EU, including the UK. So Jonathan, uh, doesn't sound much like cash is dying to me. What things jumped out to you? Yeah, a couple of things, Karen. Firstly, I wasn't enormously surprised by this. When you look at the cash in circulation across all these uh, markets, it's actually increasing. And this was a trend we started seeing, I guess, off the back of the quantitative easing programs post Lehman in 2008 into 2009 and the economic slowdown. Uh, but certainly, as consumer spending's increased, the cash in circulation's continue to increase. So uh, the fact that the total amount of cash used has gone up from 2.1 trillion to 2.2 trillion was not an enormous surprise. And it's very consistent with what we see across our ATM estate. We run around about 200,000 globally, and it's a very consistent pattern. In fact, if you look at the last public holiday weekend um, in some of our European markets, the amount of cash withdrawal transactions through the ATMs were up around about 7% year on year across that same weekend the prior year. So people still love cash. People still love cash. And um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, about why that is as we, as we draw insights from the work that we've done together. But, but let's now take a, a couple of minutes to look at the countries that we examined in a little more detail and to look at the share based on 2015 data and the estimated growth over the next five years. What jumps out at you? Well, my eyes uh, were drawn straight to where the people are. So um, I started at the, um, the, the big geographies, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, and the United Kingdom. Um, and we, those are geographies we know very well um, in our business, and all except one, Germany, uh, is actually predicted to grow in terms of cash usage. 
Um, and um, you know, one Italy, uh, you know, showing exceptionally strong growth. Um, I'd say I was slightly surprised to see Germany um, declining, albeit declining from a very high cash share at over 21%. Um, but the Germans in particular, and certainly the cash usage trends we see in Germany, suggest that uh, there's still a very strong um, uh, desire for cash as a payments method. Um, there's a very strong desire for cash um, as a, uh, a, a as a storage method as well. I mean, the, the Germans were probably the most adamant about the withdrawal of the 500 euro note. Uh, they were up in arms about it. Um, so uh, very encouraged to see that growth across the larger economies. And that's very consistent with the trends that we see across our European ATMs as well. Um, there are clearly a couple of states that have an anti-cash agenda, um, Sweden and Netherlands probably being the, mo the more obvious. But even in Sweden, um, we are seeing a consumer backlash to uh, the withdrawal of cash as a choice of payment. And I think in part that's what's driving the almost 6% growth over the next five years. So I think I wouldn't be surprised if um, some of those anti-cash markets have almost bottomed out. Um, the, the, the other aspect that is interesting to me is um, when we think about the convenience of cash and where the bank branches are actually closing. And in many of these markets, uh, we're seeing quite aggressive bank branch closure programs. And Karen, maybe we'll get into that a bit more through the discussion. Yeah, I, I think um, I think that's a good a good point because it does um, it does have some some bearing on I know your business in particular, but I also think the um, the ability to meet consumers' needs for a payment method they obviously like and and, and use a lot of. So, so now let let's look at um, the next slide, which it goes into a little bit more um, historical perspective on on cash share of these of these large economies and some of the trends that you're seeing. I, I think one of the things that, that I still found interesting was the, was the UK, and we've re released a special edition of the cash index that focuses just on the UK. But it is certainly the land of digital payments, contactless cards, um, and yet when you look at the share of cash, it still remains quite high and as a percentage of, of, the, of transactions is obviously still quite high too. What's your take on that? Yeah, the, um, the, the challenge in some ways with looking at cash share uh, in, 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 in this way is that you miss the trends in absolute uh, patterns. So if you take the UK as an example, it is cash, cash share as, uh, of the overall um, uh, all payments methodologies um, is, has, has been going down and is predicted to continue to go down at a pretty similar rate. Um, if you look at the amount of cash withdrawals in the UK, uh, the UK payments network is run by Link. Uh, the actual number of cash withdrawals in the first six months of this year were just a nudge ahead of what they were in the first six months of last year. And actually, the amount of cash withdrawn was um, around about 1% above what it was this time last year. So the share may be going down a nudge. The practicality of the situation is that um, because consumer spending is going up, because the UK population is growing, uh, actually, cash usage in uh, value is actually on the increase and up 1% for the first six months of this year. So I think that's an important point to, to make. When we think about the methodology that we used in, in preparing the cash index, we, we really did look at two very distinct measures. It's the use of cash as a percentage of payment transacting, and it's also the, the growth in spending, which as you just pointed out, if spending is on the increase, even if the usage as a percentage of transactions is slightly declining, the overall growth increases because spending is on, is on the rise. So I think that's a point 
that you know just purely looking at some of the more traditional measures of cash um, really does really does miss, which is why so many people jump to the erroneous conclusion that cash is is dying. But but one of the things that I, I wanted to get your perspective on is some of these large economies that really do look at cash as an important share of payment transacting. Germany, I think, has always been a very cash-centric economy, but Spain and Portugal, um, you know, are, are there correlations between the economic uncertainty in countries and the use of cash that you've been able to observe? Yes, yeah, so I think there are two things happening there, Karen. I think. Firstly, there is definitely a um, Southern Europe uh, consumer behavior effect driving some of those very high percentages. I think you're right to highlight Germany. Germany's always been a very strong cash economy. Uh, it's always been one uh, a very strong cash-oriented behavior by the, uh, the German public. Um, but if you go down to um, Milan or Madrid or Lisbon or anywhere and uh, see what's actually happening in the cafes, you know, very strong cafe society. Uh, try t telling someone in a in, in a in a cafe in um, in Florence to to, to pay for their um, cappuccino with a with a contactless card. It just just never happens. You know, they are they remain very very cash oriented societies. Um, in fact, uh, Italy, interestingly, is showing a potential increase in the, uh, the share of cash. I think the other factor is what you just highlighted. Um, in economically uncertain times, there is no doubt a desire to uh, use cash for, 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 for so many reasons. I was with a group of students a couple of weeks back and just discussing their payment habits. Um, and I was very struck by one particular student who told me he takes five euros out every single morning. It's for his bus fare, it's for his lunch, and he knows exactly where he stands. And still many people are thinking like that, and the propensity to think like that at a time when uh, there's more economic uncertainty uh, certainly uh, leads to a flight to cash. So I think you're right. Yeah, no, I, I think that's one of the things that, that everyone um, underestimates about the, the utility of cash is it's, it's very tangible and you know exactly how much you have to spend and I think it's one of the, the reasons also trying to move uh, those who are unbanked or underbanked to digital even though everyone thinks that that's quote unquote better for them. It makes something that is very tangible very intangible and therefore not as attractive as a, as a payment method and I think sometimes we um, in our, in our zeal to become everything digital all the time, we forget um, some of the basic things that human beings want out of, uh, out of their payment utility. Let's talk a little bit about growth over the next five years and the growth rate. And um, I, I think that there are some, some interesting observations that really speaks to what you just pointed out, which is overall, when you look at the collection of these countries, um, over the next five years, cash will continue to to grow. And I think that surprises lots of people when you look at the aggregate collection of these countries that, as we said, represents, um, you know, 89% of the GDP of the EU. It's, it's, it's not an intuitive conclusion. Um, how do you explain this to the people you talk to? Your business is obviously to explain this to people all the time. Yeah, I mean, I think there's um, uh, different views from um, ourselves. I mean, bear in mind our whole business model is driven on providing uh, access to cash for people. Um, I think the first thing that I'd say is uh, people just continue to like cash. It's, it's part of the staple. Um, and it is, you know, when, when, when the three questions people ask themselves is, you know, where do I need to get to, uh, what do I need to eat, and uh, have I got cash on me? And it, it will always remain that way. So, again, this is very consistent with the trends that we're seeing across our um, 200,000 ATMs, many of which are in uh, the Western Europe region. Um, 
So again, I am um, I'm, I, I'm anticipating a, a, a similar pattern. Um, I also think that the back to the earlier comments around economic uncertainty, this notion of negative interest rates and uh, a, a very difficult financial concept to understand, even from specialists within the financial industry, um, does concern people. Um, and as it concerns people, um, it, it does tend to draw people back to uh, cash as a, as, as a payment method. Um, the other thing that we find is uh, we ask people all the time about um, security and trust. Uh, these are two very important uh, notions for, uh, as, our, as our world uh, becomes more digital, becomes more complex, it's uh, top of people's minds. The amount of uh, cyber fraud happening across all these markets is uh, increasing quite dramatically. Um, the one thing people feel very strongly about is that um, if I go to the ATM, put my card in, get my cash out, um, there is a direct link between me and my bank account, and no one else is going to interfere with that. Um, and the evidence of uh, fraud through an ATM transaction is uh, extremely remote. So I think there's also a security element to this that means that people continue to want to, to, want to use cash. So continue increasing consumer spend, uh, some population growth, um, but then that consumer habit, even in a digital age, is not going to change rapidly. Yeah, I, I agree with that, and I think if we look at the next uh, at the next slide and a couple of takeaways, certainly um, reflects what you just said. But I, I'd like to dig into it a little a little more. Um, you know, we kind of we kind of joke in payments that uh, that nothing ever nothing ever goes away. We just layer additional types of um, tender onto onto each other, and cash has certainly been a durable payment method for thousands of years. And I think that uh, you know the, the example that I talked about earlier, we think that digital and mobile displaces cash, but in particular economies, including the U.S., it, it, it just emphasizes the need to get it. And M-Pesa would have never ignited but for the agent networks that provided access to cash in the villages that individuals really needed to uh, to go to, to actually get the, to get their cash. So I think the, the the irony here is that digital doesn't displace cash in many in many ways. It actually amplifies its need. Yes, and again, Karen, that's very consistent with our own in-house research. Um, we've done up and down the street research on people actually using ATMs and people not using ATMs and. Uh, we found in, take, let's go back to the UK market uh, that we were talking about earlier, um, just over a third of people uh, would uh, openly tell us that they are broadening their payment repertoire. So they are using contactless. The Underground Railway in London uh, now runs on uh, tap and go technology. Um, there is no doubt a, uh, a, a, a change and an increase in the, the, the breadth of type of payment that people are making. That said, um, they are still using cash on a very, very consistent basis. Um, and again, uh, it's important to look at the absolute amounts as well as the number of transactions because many of the digital transactions, particularly the tap and go ones, will be for, in the UK, sub 10 pounds whereas the average cash withdrawal is in the 50 to 60 pound re re region. So yes, there is a, um, an, an increase in the types of payment methodology that people are choosing to deploy. Um, but at the same time, I think this is partly a change in lifestyle, et cetera. At the same time, um, there is uh, still a, a very consistent uh, ongoing use of cash, and like I said, that's borne out by what's been happening in the first six months of this year. You know, the the, um, the funny anecdote that I'll that I'll add to this was um, uh, I was doing a fireside chat with uh, a very senior executive um, at uh, at Google who runs Google Commerce, and we were talking about Android Pay, 
And, you know, he conceded that one of the big issues that all mobile players have, including Android Pay, is, is, uh, is, is ubiquity and getting consumers with the right devices and merchants with the right devices to kind of come together at the same time. And he reached into his pocket and he said, let me show you my mobile wallet. And he pulls out um, two credit cards and um, a $100 bill and a $20 bill with a rubber band wrapped around them with his driver's license. And he said, this is my mobile wallet. I know I can use it everywhere in the world, which I thought was, which I thought was interesting and goes to your point, which is there are, there are places and, and, and methods of cash that, that consumers use, including cash. They use them in different, for different reasons in different places, but it isn't as if they're not using it at all. And, and for, because, of, because of the fact that it is, it is ubiquitous. Merchants like and accept cash. Most of them do. Well, I, you know, that's a really, really important point because when we talk about uh, payment methods and the future of cash, so many people focus on, um, on individual consumers, um, the public. Uh, what, what is easy to overlook is the fact that cash is a very important part of the broader ecosystem. So if you look at uh, merchants, again, back to the research that we've done in Western Europe, um, we found that if, if, if an ATM was not present on a high street, the main shopping street in a particular town, um, that almost half of those people would not come to that high street. So 44% of people are primarily going to the main shopping street to use the ATM. Um, wow. Now, we've extrapolated that based on their spending habits because, and the other staggering thing is, each time they take money out of that ATM, they reinvest 40 cents in the euro back in that particular high street on that particular occasion. So um, this goes straight back into the local economy. Um, and um, yeah, we've extrapolated that to see what damage it would do to, uh, to those particular markets. And if you, again, if you just look at the UK as an example, uh, we could see up to 100 billion pounds lost from local communities if ATMs were withdrawn because people want to wow. get at their cash. So it's a very, very uh, powerful um, uh, stimulant to communities and local economies and becoming even more important as bank branches um, are closing. Um, and funnily enough, that's the, almost the third stakeholder group. If the first is the consumer, the second is um, the local community, the local economy, the local retailer. The third is the financial institution themselves because they're trying to shut branches at a rate of knots, but they still need to allow people access to their core banking products. And actually, um, they have been able to shut uh, bank branches due to um, other operators coming in and placing ATMs where the bank branch used to be. And that's a trend we're seeing accelerating in Spain right now. So um, this is happening across many geographies in, uh, in this Western Europe uh, catchment area. So, so that, I think, brings us to, to the innovations around cash as a, as a tender type. And I think it goes to the point that you just made, which is, you know, we talk about commerce being contextual, uh, and we talk about that in the context of digital. So inserting the opportunity to buy things where consumers are looking for things to buy. And it sounds like making cash contextual through the example that you just gave is, is clearly important for consumers, but also the local businesses and the, the economies in which, in which they operate. What are, you, what are you seeing with respect to, to, to innovations in, in access, um, providing access to cash in those contextual con, uh, contexts? Well, two different, two, two, two different things that we're seeing. Um, access to cash, um, we're seeing a change in behavior, uh, and we've seen this quite dramatically over the last five years or so. Um, previously, when people wanted to get cash, they'd go to their bank branch. They'd go to a branch ATM uh, to get their cash. Over the last five years, that has changed to uh, their daily routine. The school run, their commute to work, uh, the grocery shop, they want to get cash 
where they're planning to go as part of their daily repertoire. So there is definitely a change in points of access. Hence, you've seen a change. If you were to map the ATMs and where they were 10 years ago and where they are now, uh, they've followed the footfall, where the people are actually going. Um, in, in, in terms of innovation, we're, we're seeing a number of things, and um, we're pretty excited about it um, within our firm. Um, Firstly, some of the basic banking services, um, such as you know, deposit functionality, people no longer want to go to their branch to, uh, to, to deposit money. They'd much rather do that as part of that daily repertoire, you know, the school run, et cetera, where they're actually planning to go as part of their routine. Um, just yesterday, Lloyd's announced the closure of another 200 branches in the UK. Branches are getting further away from where I live. As more branches close, they're getting further away from where I live. So if I can do my basic banking services, uh, like deposit, that's really helpful. The second trend that we're seeing is um, a desire for a um, quicker transaction. So if you go to a busy train station at commuter hour, you will see a, a, a queue at the ATM. Go to the main train station in Berlin or wherever, you will see a pretty sizable queue at the ATM. And now we're able to get uh, people turned around much quicker at the ATM and get through that queue much quicker through innovation such as recognition of someone's favorite transaction. So they can put their card in and we can say, do you want the usual? and they get the usual 100 euro withdrawal, whatever it happens to be for that particular individual. Um, we are seeing some, um, some uh, contactless ATMs as well. So uh, people no longer need to physically insert the card. And that contactless could be as easy as a code uh, that they punch in that allows them to receive or to remit monies around the world. So suddenly I can uh, remit monies from a bank branch in, uh, Barcelona off to the Philippines. Um, so we, we're seeing a lot, and, and one of the more fun innovations actually that um, that we've been using quite a lot in our business recently is uh, an on-screen questionnaire. I mean, it is staggering the reach and touch of ATMs into society. Uh, today is Payday Friday that we're actually recording this piece on uh, Payday Friday, which is one of our busiest uh, days of the month. And on a busy payday Friday in the UK uh, at a Cardtronics ATM, we will serve 2 million people with cash. Um, wow. And if you, if you put that into context, that's around 5% of the banked population, um, and we're about a quarter of the market. So one in five of the banked population are uh, going to the ATM on payday Friday, um, and I'm delighted to say that uh, a quarter of those are coming to our ATMs. We started asking them questions. We asked them questions about uh, do they think that tap and go contactless technology is secure? And overwhelmingly, they said they've got doubts about it. They said, no, we, we, we think other payment methods are much more secure. We, don't, we, we haven't got comfort with it yet as a secure method. Um, more recently, we asked them about Brexit. And we said uh, in the week leading up to the vote on the 23rd of June, in or out, very simple. And there were many, uh, many uh, pollsters going in the months leading up to Brexit. Um, in the five days before Brexit, we asked 40,000 people uh, in or out. 52% told us out, uh, which was wow. the exact vote on the day. So of all the polls, the most accurate and the most immediate was through, um, uh, was through the ATM. So it is very much part of the fabric of society with this enormous reach. And we're now starting to see it used in a, in, in a, in, in a broader uh, range of methods. Well, it sounds like we could use you uh, in predicting the outcome of the presidential election here. We should, uh, you should do that. Um, uh, but it's, I mean, I think your point is well taken. I mean, it does, it does uh, cut across a swath of, of the population because everyone still uses cash, and so you do get, um, you know, really the, the perspective of such a broad group of people. Let's talk a little bit about um, innovations in secure access to cash. We talked about just access more generally and, and, and putting 
um, access and, and you know, these cash boxes, if you will, in locations where consumers are. There's, there's actually one in my, in my, in my nail salon. Um, but, but now there's been a lot of innovation with cardless cash, where you use a mobile phone and touch ID to activate a bank ATM, I realize. But, but what are some of the things that you're kicking around and thinking about when it comes to making sure that the access to cash is both convenient and secure? Um, so convenience-wise, we are still deploying ATMs in all these markets um, um, that, that, we, that we operate in, many of the markets in, um, in uh, North America, um, increasingly in Europe now. In fact, even Ireland, if you look at the Ireland stats uh, uh, from the cash usage index, you'd say, why would you ever go to Ireland? The practicality of it is uh, Ireland has uh, always been a locked shop um, with just bank branch ATMs. And again, um, that's not convenient access. That is not financial inclusion. And as we start putting ATMs uh, to where people want to go, where people actually are, you know, we're seeing a very uh, interesting sort of shift in behavior. Um, some of the other things that we're looking at, I think, I think the contactless uh, um, and, uh, ability to access your cash is really important. Uh, NFC is becoming an increasing part of the, uh, of the ATM, um, as is some digital uh, recognition of, uh, of, uh, of, um, uh, of the specific user of the ATM. Um, we uh, are seeing an increasingly global uh, consumer base, so people do want to remit funds, remit cash from market to market, and we're facilitating that through the ATM. Uh, I think it's very important that uh, there's an easy way to uh, flow funds to friends and family elsewhere in the world. Um, we are seeing uh, some retailers who find uh, rebanking cash a very um, prohibitive process, prohibitive both in time and effort, but also in money. So it is much easier for them to recycle cash through the ATM. So uh, we are seeing more uh, recycling ATMs that allow uh, retailers to simplify their business system. Um, the one, one other thing I'd say about uh, innovation, and, and in particular, uh, tap and go, contactless, et cetera, is it is easy for us to get stuck in our ivory towers, um, in our nice offices in Boston or London or Berlin, wherever they may happen to be. And um, certainly in some of those markets, you do see uh, a higher degree of digital payments. Um, however, that is not um, where the majority of the people are. And if you get out and about into the, the real world where um, people are leading lives in a, in, 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 in a very sort of practical day-to-day -day way, um, these contactless technologies don't have anywhere mu as much relevance to those people. And in, in, in those places, we still see a much higher propensity and desire to, uh, to, 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 to use cash. Yeah, no, I, I completely, I completely agree with you on on, on that score. Um, and just looking at the at the market in the U.S. around contactless, it's it's a tough slog to get consumers to adopt because there are constraints on on both the consumer and the merchant side. And as we've discussed, cash is just one of those ubiquitous tender types that consumers can get access to and merchants uh, gladly gladly accept. Um, quick question before we, we move on. You talked about the variety of other things that ATMs can do in addition to dispensing cash. They obviously are, you're, you're using them now for remittances and, and accepting cash deposits. Are there, uh, are there other use cases that you're experimenting with since you have this contextual opportunity to uh, capture the consumer's attention and perhaps adapt that, that, uh, that machine to other, other things as well? You, you mentioned surveys, but I wondered if there were other things that you've been uh, cooking up in the labs. Yeah, we're doing a number of things, and we've always got a, um, a, a, a pipeline of, um, uh, of, of live activities for the next generation of, um, uh, of, of innovation. 
and uh, some of it's very simple and um, and and, and consumer-facing, and some of, some of it's quite economic and commercial and retailer-facing. So, um, for example, uh, we're running a number of uh, punch card promotions to support some of our local retailer partners in North America. Um, we run um, advertising and uh, in-store uh, consumer promotion um, communication through the ATM to, again, help with our retail partners in some of these markets. So uh, there are some quite commercial activities that are supporting um, uh, the, the retailer's business, business model. Um, on the other side, um, we're getting much more uh, dynamic about um, uh, about uh, about giving and, um, and, and and charitable donation through the ATM and making it easy and um, and, and, and and guiding people the right way and supporting uh, specific um, uh, charitable sort of weekend events um, that happen in, uh, in 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 all of these markets. Um, so yeah, there's there's, there's there's a ton of stuff going on. Um, we're not quite at the stage yet where people can buy a train ticket or a theatre ticket through the ATM, but that's not far away, you know. Um, in fact, uh, we're delighted to have on board in our Spanish business the gentleman who designed the Punt Grock ATM um, in the Spanish market. And that's probably the most um, uh, broad range of services that you'll see on any ATM. It's a dual screen ATM uh, with multiple functionality of the different transactions that you can do on it. So yeah, this goes far beyond uh, bill pay, top up my mobile phone, uh, check my balance, and into uh, other stuff that people want to do. Yeah, I was going to ask you about bill payments because um, you know I could I could imagine that being a natural use case as well. It's uh, an efficient way to do it. It doesn't require a person to be sitting behind a counter accepting cash with a with a bill, provided you can uh, work the back end to provide posting. Um, typically, uh, cash bill payments are are things that are done when uh, you know within within a day or even on the day that the bill is due. Provided you can work that out, it would seem like a logical. Um, Opportunity for those uh, ATMs to be used to support that as well. Correct, and um, and it is um, very uh, yeah. It, it, the the back end process is very doable, and um, and again, you know, um, in markets where there's a desire to simplify that process, there's something we're looking at. Well, that's great. Well, Jonathan, this has been um, this has been a lot of uh, a lot of fun to talk to talk about. It's an interesting um, topic for sure, and I think a very robust way of providing a another look at the usage of cash, which is, I think, as we've spent the last half hour um, discussing, something that many people misunderstand and therefore and therefore misrepresent. So, the cash index for these 15 countries is available uh, on our site. We've just published the UK edition. Do you want to give a, a little sneak peek into, into those findings? I, I thought they were interesting. I, I think I teased at the beginning in the land of, of contactless where that's really all the news that's reported. Cash remains a very strong and vibrant payment method. Yeah, totally. And uh, look, once again, um, uh, we 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 embrace some of the new digital payment methods. Uh, we embrace them because they are not eating into cash. Um, they are complementing cash. People are using them in different uh, purchase occasions. Um, and again, just week in week out, we are seeing a hunger to uh, keep using cash as a payment methodology. So. This isn't about an arm wrestle between digital and cash, contactless and cash. Um, it is about how consumers want to run their lives, and they still want to run their lives uh, with a desire to have cash on them in their wallet and to be used on a regular basis. And hence, um, we're delighted to be in this wonderful ATM business. Uh, as, uh, as you should be. So Jonathan, thank you so much for uh, the great insights into the use of cash in an economy that's obviously very important and one that is um, 
worth paying attention to um, as we monitor um, the, the, the fallout from Brexit. Are you, are you anticipating that cash will become more important than, uh, than it is already? Is that something that you're, you're planning for? Or have you, uh, have you heard rumblings that, in fact, people are going to find cash a more comforting payment tender until this sorts itself out? Well, look, I, I think as we saw in the last economic slowdown, um, when there's financial and uh, economic uncertainty behind political uncertainty, um, there is a flight to cash. Cash usage tends to go up. Um, I suspect we're seeing a little bit of a short-term trend in the United Kingdom just now because it suddenly got very expensive to go on holiday to Europe uh, post the uh, Brexit vote. Um, mainland Europe uh, and the Eurozone has uh, just just increased in expense to, to Brits. So uh, I suspect we'll see far more Brits choosing to stay at home and uh, vacation in the United Kingdom than overseas. Um, so short term, yes. Um, medium term, uh, possibly a bit with the, uh, the, the, the economic uncertainty, um, as we saw uh, back in 2008, 2009. Um, uh, we're not counting on it. Um, it's certainly not going to be negative for cash. Um, uh, how positive it is, uh, time will tell. Well, Jonathan, thanks again for your insights. It was, uh, it was great to have you with me today. Uh, until next time, thank you. Thank you, Karen. Okay. That was